Hi, and welcome. Um, in this video, we're going to talk about the process of doing research. This is kind of a big picture of what is research and how do we go about thinking about the process of doing research in general. Uh, it's just a brief introduction and a way to get you thinking about what it is that you're going to be doing in this course. Um, the reason we start with the big picture is, is really there are two reasons. The first is uh, that I want you to be able to see how your research fits into this larger thing called research. Uh, this, uh, uh, research is like an enterprise, an institution, uh, and there are a lot of people engaged in it. And what you're going to be doing in this course is a research project that is really part of this larger enterprise. So I want you to be able to make that connection and to see how what you're doing fits into the big picture. The second thing is, uh, and probably this is more important because it's more practical, uh, I think it'd be a good idea to get a sense of um, uh, at least how to go about this project, uh, at least in the big sense of, of how to approach it and how to move through the various stages and steps involved with doing research. So let's start with the big picture. Let's start with the definition of research. And the definition that I like to do comes out of the book by uh, Miriam and Simpson called A Guide to Research for Educators and Trainers of Adults. Um, their definition is, um, is this. Uh, uh, the process is funda fundamentally one of research. Uh, that is looking at a situation again and again until previously stated goals or criteria are met. Uh, the defining characteristics of research uh, is, is that it is systematic, purposeful, and disciplined. A uh, process of discovering reality structured from human experience. It is a matter of process as well as outcomes. Uh, the important points for our purposes in this definition are the three key words, systematic, purposeful, and disciplined. This is what sets research apart from casual observations. Um, I mean, I can walk down the street and I can look at some people and I can say, oh, well, those people are like this, or they have this quality, or they have those values, or whatever. But that's based on simply a casual observation and opinion, and it's not based on observation that is systematic, disciplined, uh, and purposeful. And that is what makes research different from just somebody's opinion. When we think about research using this definition of um, Merriam and Simpson, we can think about two general categories of research. Uh, these are empirical and non-empirical research. Non-empirical research includes things like uh, history, philosophy, critical theory, interpretive literature reviews, um, and other um, uh, writing like that. The essence of non-empirical um, research is that typically what you're doing is you are thinking about um, issues, problems, uh, and ideas, uh, but you're not gathering data in terms of observing people uh, or, or using questionnaires or uh, interviews or tests or, or, or other data collection techniques. In this course, we're really going to be focusing on empirical research, which is the process of collecting data from people. Um, and so that's another reason why the Merriam and Simpson defini definition really works for us is because we want to be systematic about that data collection. We want to be purposeful. We want to have a specific purpose in mind for collecting that data. Uh, and we want to be disciplined about it in that we observe certain rules so that our research is credible. In general, empirical research can be divided into two broad approaches, um, qualitative and quantitative research. Now, there's lots of other ways to divide up empirical research, and so I don't want to suggest that these are the only ways to think about empirical research, but these are good ways to think about it for our purposes. And you'll notice on the slide uh, that there are several different kinds of qualitative and quantitative research um, models that we can, uh, we can use. 
Uh, and what I want to suggest to you is, uh, we'll go into those in, in, in another time in more detail, but the general descript, um, issue here is to think about going into qualitative research or quantitative research uh, because that's the appropriate method for the kinds of issues you want to investigate. Um, when we talk about these big issues of types of research, like qualitative and quantitative, empirical and non-empirical, what we're really talking about here are things called research paradigms. Um, a paradigm is a mindset. It's um, a set of values uh, grounded in cultural and intellectual norms um, that we often don't even think about. They're basic assumptions that we have about what is right, what's the right way to do things, what's the appropriate methods. Um, and so oftentimes our paradigms go unchallenged and we don't have a critical sense of what they are. There's also in the literature continuing debate over different paradigms, which one's best, which ones are more appropriate for different types of issues, uh, which ones are better in different cultural or, or value settings. Um, and so uh, this is a, an issue where there, are, where there is a lot of debate, a lot of um, uh, give and take among scholars about uh, different kinds of research paradigms and which ones are more appropriate. Thinking about the issue of qualitative and quantitative research, however, what we're really concerned about here is with the notion that one of these two general approaches to research will be more appropriate for your, the issues that you want to investigate than the other one. Uh, so we're going to use a largely pragmatic definition to define our research paradigm, which is one that what's, what's more appropriate for the issues we want to investigate, rather than a more philosophical definition that would have us be looking at um, um, why we chose this particular paradigm based on our values, our, our cultural assumptions, um, and our uh, allegiance to a particular intellectual theory. Now that we have a general sense of some of the basic issues involved with research, let's talk about the big process of doing research. When we think about research in general, we can divide it into three broad phases or categories. These are conceptualization, data collection and analysis, and dissemination. And I'm gonna talk about each of these three stages in turn and take a look at what are some of the issues involved with those various stages. If you look at the first stage, uh, conceptualization, there are a number of steps that are involved in this. Basically, we can talk about three elements to this process. Uh, identifying the issues that you want to investigate and refining those issues so that you fully understand them. Identifying a sample or a group of people that you want to collect data from and then being able to narrow and define that group of people into a specific population, uh, and um, deciding on a particular approach or methodology for collecting that data, uh, so that uh, whether or not you're going to use a test or a questionnaire or interviews or some other method of observation to collect your data. So those are the three issues that you're going to work back and forth and balance amongst. The issues, the sample, and the method. Uh, and that provides, those are the things that you have to do in order to be able to, um, to, be able to conceptualize your research study and to come up with, with how you're going to go about this research study. The second stage is what we call data collection and analysis. This is where you actually go out and collect the data. So you're going to administer your survey, you're going to conduct your interviews, you're going to, you're going to give your, your test or your uh, your data collection uh, procedure to some group of people and then you're, when you get that back, you get, get that data back, you're then going to analyze that data to find out what people said and, and what their thoughts, feelings, reactions, responses were, etc. So that's the process of data collection and analysis. Before you do this though, you have to have your plan to do your research approved. You can't just go out in the streets and start collecting data. That would be uh, a big no-no. That's, that's not you, uh, because uh, uh, we, we want to make sure that, one, 
that your plan is a good one, that you, you, you have a good sense of what you're going to do, uh, and, and that the way in which you're going to collect the data and so on will provide the right kind of data. And the second issue is uh, we want to make sure that the way you're going to treat the people in your study, your participants, uh, uh, is ethical, that you're going to, in, in fact, observe all the ethical guidelines. So typically, if you think about like dissertations, um, theses, and formal research like that, there are two approval bodies that review all uh, plans for research before they are uh, can actually put into to play. Uh, that is your faculty committee who reviews the plan to make sure that it's sound academically, that you have a good research plan and a good sense of what you're going to do and how you're going to do it, and the IRB, or the Institutional Review Board for the Protection of Human Subjects, which is a committee uh, that reviews your plan to make sure that, in fact, uh, you are going to, you've observed all the ethical considerations you need to, concern, you, you need to observe. In this course, the instructor is going to serve both of those roles. So I'm going to review your plan before you collect data to make sure that the plan's a good one and that the data you're collecting is appropriate. And I'm also going to review what you're going to do to make sure that all the ethical considerations have been observed. Now the third general stage uh, is um, disseminating the research. If you do research and it doesn't get disseminated, then what's the point? Why did you do it in the first place? Um, research has to get out there. People have to know about it. It has to be looked at uh, by others so that they can get, get the benefit of the knowledge you've generated through your research study. When that happens, then you've come full cycle because people will then react to your research and new ideas for new research projects will emerge out of what you've accomplished with your particular research um, uh, project. Now, in this course, we're going to go for a limited dissemination of your research, not a public dissemination of research, uh, because that will keep us within the guidelines of the IRB. And we're going to talk more about that issue when we have the video on the IRB itself. Okay, so in conclusion, uh, in this video, we tried to define research. We tied, tried to give a brief description of the general research process. Uh, we looked at issues related to non-empirical and empirical research, uh, and we tried to give a sense of um, how you actually go about the big three stages of conceptualization, data collection and analysis, and dissemination. Thank you.